microphone. Muhammad was listening to heretical Christians and he was coming down the mountain preaching I'll address this, that point preaching afterwards. this, let's changing see. the words and trying let's to pass see. it off as revelation. He spoke from the cradle, but Jesus was a prophet. Meaning, Allah knows where there is wrong and where there is right. So there is, Muhammad Hassan is not copying anything. He's just correcting wherever the faults are. We say he was not copying. He was a prophet of God like the previous prophets. So he's basically bringing the same message but they are comparing those messages. Okay. So that's what they okay. that's what they okay. reject. If this is from a man, we know Muhammad got this revelation bit by bit by bit over a span of years. Now because it was over a span of years, if it's from a man, we would expect some sort of contradiction if it's from man. And we find that here. You want to say something about Islam? Because I have something to do. False prophecy of Jesus. Nice one, thank you. False prophecy of Jesus. Yeah, let's do another time. Let's talk about the Quran. Yeah, yeah, sure. Take the hadith that said that Muhammad said. <laughs> There is no such thing as a contagious disease, and ah. then bring it to coronavirus. Yeah, where is it? Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right okay, right, right, right. I was gonna do. The, okay. oh, go, you go I don't first. think he ever says there's no such thing oh, as contagious. Actually, he says he says wherever there is a plague, yes, no one right should there. come out of the city. So obviously, he's acknowledging there's a plague there. Then he so you can't say. I can. Okay, show me that. Show me the hadith. I think what he's saying is he, he says no plague should enter Medina. Okay, I think you ready? probably. Are you ready? Um, Abdullah bin Umar reported. What's the hadith? The reference. Sahih Muslim. 2225B, two, 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 uh, book 29, Hadith 157. No, use the first one. I think oh, yeah. The first one Sahih Muslim, 2225B for Bravo. 2225. Uh, yeah. 225. Sahih Muslim. And if I just read it, read it, read it, read it. Yeah. Yeah. Abdullah bin Umar reported Allah's Messenger as saying, There is no transitive disease, no ill omen, and bad luck is found in the house or wife or horse i've no idea what that there means is no transitive disease yeah. no ill omen and bad luck is lounged in the house yeah. or wife or horse you agree with that no transitive no disease because he's saying that it's the will of allah if you are uh, struck by illness mm. it's because allah decreed it not because you caught it from a from, maybe from, from a horse i've no idea yeah let, let, let me just say the one uh, 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 you didn't know of that one Abdullah reported the as saying there is no transitive disease, no ill omen, and bad luck is bound in the house. Bound in the house, or wife or horse. To be honest, it's not very, it's not very, it's not very, it's not very clear that he's talking about a specific, specific uh, situation, specific house. He's talking about. We don't know. He's talking about general. You're not giving an extra. <laughs> okay, somebody had to fly the flag. <laughs> Rolling action. Okay, so when we talk about the Quran as being the word of God, yeah. I, I struggle with believing the Quran is the word of God for a couple of reasons. Because mm. I think that if the Quran is the word of God, it should not have um, it should not have two things. It should not, it should not have borrowed sources and then words change from those sources and then being passed off as revelation. And it should also not have convenient revelations. And I believe, I believe within, I believe within the life of Muhammad. Okay, sorry, within the life of Muhammad and his prophethood, you have very convenient revelations. For example, let me read you this. This is in Surah 33, verse 53. Oh, you who have believed, do not enter the houses of the prophets except when you are permitted for a meal, without the wasting its readiness. But when you are invited, then enter, and when you have eaten, disperse without seeking to remain for conversation. Indeed, yes, that behaviour was, so was troubling the Prophet and he is shy of case. dismissing you, but Allah is not shy of the truth. So when I read this, it's clear. Muhammad is too shy to tell his guest to leave. So Allah has to step in for him and say, well, although Muhammad's shy to tell you to leave, I'm not shy, so leave. This seems to me that Muhammad gets this at a very convenient time. So what, well, I always ask this, what purpose does that have for humanity? So for me, it's quite obvious. When I read that, that's a, that's a revelation that he's helping Muhammad in a certain situation he finds himself in. Well, I, first of all, this criteria, where you read this criteria, that it should not be borrowed from some other source, and it should not be convenient. What you mean convenient here is, at that moment, whatever happening in the life of Prophet, God should not intervene with the, with the Prophet. No, that's, that's not what I mean. That's exactly what the verse is. No, no, no. The girl, no, this, verse when, is guiding, I mean, I'm talking right now. The verse is basically guiding what's happening over there. Allah is, 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 is Quran is, a, is like coming every 
now and then. So Allah is there watching his prophet in his life and he's guiding the people and prophet what to do in this situation and what not to do in this situation. If you read the commentary about this verse, Muhammad Sallallahu was very, as a human being, he was a very shy human being. He, people coming and bothering him, he's not just telling them to go away. And Allah can see that his nature is like that. So Allah say he's not saying it, but he is bothering him. But yeah, it's a good nature, he, he can't say that to them, just go home. So Allah is telling Muslims, look, your Prophet is not saying it, but I'm telling you, this you should do. So this is why this verse came to tell people how to behave but you when you go to Prophet's house. But do you know understand what I'm saying? No, I disagree, because to me that seems too... It's not convenient. convenient. That, it's, it's convenient for Muhammad. This, can, this seems very too much convenient to be a true, genuine revelation from God because this seems to be a revelation that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is getting Muhammad out of a tricky situation. He doesn't want the guests to be there in his house, but he doesn't want to tell them himself. So suddenly he gets a revelation that says, you shouldn't come to my house and stay too long, you should leave. I'm too shy, but Allah is not shy. To me that seems very convenient. It seems, that it seems, but not necessarily it is. Well, it does seem very convenient, because why else would Allah give this, what, what, what benefit does that give to mankind as a revelation? Oh, it is a benefit, absolutely benefit. i tell you what, it applies right now as well. So as a Muslim community, we know the life of the Prophet and the Muslims, how they behave. So when you go to somebody's house, don't try to just stay till late night and don't let the person telling you please just go you should realize that your log is late night in somebody's house and we have example of the prophet and his companion so we should be as a in our good behavior we should not bother people too much and we just just go this is not convenient this is Allah just guiding the, the, the muslims how to behave what is what is the good manners and how not to bother your neighbors or some, somebody who invite you eat your food don't stay too long and just go i, I, I think do you know i'll call that i would call that the god is telling you how to behave with each other in the community it's, no, a, good, you know, it's, a, it's a good manner do you know what that looks like that, that if you just look at this from a, from a perspective how we're looking at this is a man who's having dinner guests in his house he's too shy to tell them to leave so suddenly he gets a very convenient it's the only way it can be described he gets a very convenient revelation that says i'm too shy to tell you god is not shy so he's telling and, and it's not it's not possible this is very it, no i'm not saying it's impossible but, so, it's, but it seems to be very convenient well they're subject to and, and, it's a it also so they are the mothers so these, of so these of are very the these, these, this is this is, one, this, is this is only one issue i have with Quran. i'll get we'll get to the next this is briefly i'll say that's a very convenient revelation that fits the wants the needs and the desires of muhammad not rather for mankind. But let me go to my second. What we're saying is our our creator second. guiding his the life of the prophet okay. and his community okay. and making a good example for them. That's what what our God is doing. He's a, he was a living God and he's telling them so this say, needed to be done in this situation and this needed to be done in this situation. So I would say, not only his house is making a rule, not only the prophet, but it applies to everybody else and is rule forever. Even we this day we can apply so when, to the same. When, when people, well. when people who are Muslim, because again, as you said earlier, we're both going to have a bias here. Yeah. Yeah. When when we look at this from from an un-Islamic perspective, when we look at this from an, outs, an outside of you, yeah, this looks like Muhammad is using this to fit his own personal situation. That I don't like having people stay at my house for too long. I'm too shy to tell them, so God's going to tell them for me. This seems like a very convenient revelation, and I'll say that points to that revelation. Well, it's not possible. I would say that's a revelation that points. No. Uh, its origin to man, not God, because this seems like it's coming from a man's desires, wants and needs, and not God himself. Now, let me go to my second so reason. God doesn't talk about your personal no, no, relations no, no, in the me, Bible? Let, let Didn't me, God let, talk let, about uh, the personal let, relations let, in the Bible? That, that's one reason why I don't think the Quran. Yeah, that Quran yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's why I don't. Yeah, that's what he's reading. Wait, one second. So that, that's one reason why I don't believe the Quran. God is Muhammad. Yeah, very convenient revelation. I'm for example, in the Quran, it says you have four wives. You can't treat them equally. Only have one. Yeah, you'd agree with that. But then Muhammad gets another convenient revelation where he says he can have more wives and this is only for you the prophet it says you know we have made the believers but this is only for you so to me show me that verse where it says you can have more wives okay so the verse here is uh, mm, if you go to our prophet we have made lawful chapter and verse 33 oh chapter 33 50 okay so our prophet indeed we have made lawful to you your wives to whom you have given their due compensation 
and those your right hand possesses. From what Allah has returned to you of captives, and the daughters of your paternal uncles, and the daughters of your paternal aunts, and the daughters of your, of your, of your maternal aunts, you can have more than four here. Let me speak. Who have immigrated with you, and a believing woman, if she gives herself to you, the Prophet. And if the Prophet wishes to marry her, this is only for you, excluding the other believers. Okay, we certainly know what we have made obligatory upon yeah, them concerning yeah. their wives and those their move. right Tell hands possess. But do. this is for you him, in order that effect. there will be upon you man, no, no discomfort. Do you see this is... Hang on a minute, which part do you say this is only for you? This is only for you, this, this is for you, in order, that, in order that there will be upon you no discomfort. So you see here, you have, you have a revelation, that is, you have a revelation so how, much get paid verse 50, how much I get paid? How much I get paid? Your name, your name on the chapter 33, page. verse 50, yeah? What? Huh? Verse 50, Bro, five, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because I want to see, this is only for you. So let me, let me, one second, let me carry on. Yeah. So you see here, this is saying that this is only for you, the prophet. So again, this seems like a very convenient revelation that Muhammad seems to get that fits his personal, yeah, that fits his personal life issue. So he's in a situation and he gets a very convenient revelation that's only meant for him. So I would say this all points to man-made revelation, not the revelation of God. Been three years so what is only for you, the believing woman, if she wants <laughs> to give herself? Yeah, he he no, no, he, he doesn't give the number. Here. There was a, there was a no, no. But at no. the time, how many wives? No, no, I, I know. He doesn't. It doesn't give number here about, about him. But the, when he says it's only for you, he's talking about when the believing woman come and give themselves to you. Yeah. So this is only for you. It's not like anybody else. The believing women coming then and giving uh, herself is, to them. Yeah, let me let me let, let me have No, no, they didn't give a hand number. Uh, how many wives here? You say one place says four. Here it says you can have more than four. So this verse doesn't is not talking about more so than when four. It, so when it says here, this is only for you. Meaning the believing women have come to you okay, and give herself okay, okay. to you. If that's the case, still a very convenient revelation that's only meant for Muhammad, which shows this isn't from this isn't from God. This is originally coming from a man's wants, needs, lusts, and desires. No, no. This cannot be a revelation from God is too convenient and it fits Muhammad's needs time and time again. For example, at the dinner guests, it fits his personal wants. This situation, no. it fits his personal wants. Uh, uh, these revelations are I convenient. think we talked about that. These, these uh, revelations, no point going back to that. These revelations are convenient and they only fit Are the you time feeling insecure now? Just not let me talk. Do not let me speak. Oh, yeah, no, I did. I did. It's my turn but to now, Can I say one more thing? They're, they're, these are, these, I told you there's two problems with the Quran that I find where it cannot be from God. <laughs> the convenient revelations being one of them. The, uh, the other issue is Muhammad borrows sources from other texts and adds it into the Quran and says it's read from God. Would you he, like me to read your couple? He, he borrowed, yeah. Would you like me to read your couple? Yes. Yeah, go on, go on. Okay. Actually, let me answer this point when the women come to, to you and they give it to you, to you themselves, then it's only for you. Meaning the Prophet Muhammad oh, okay. was in, in the status, a special position. He was, he was, many women wanted to marry him, many. And they desired, because marrying a prophet is a guaranteed paradise to be his wife. So many women desire for him to say no to women will be, will be stopping them for being that position to be a wife of the prophet. So for that, that sake, Allah says, for if anybody come to give it to you as they as to be your wife, you can say no yes to them. Do not uh, reject them. Do not take them away from that right to be a wife of the prophet. So that his position okay. was okay. quite special. Uh, okay, but as I said, it's quite a special situation, quite a special position because it fits his wants, desires, needs. So this is a convenient revelation once again. It fits Muhammad's purpose. Now, my second reason for believing the Quran has uh, its origin, its origin for man rather than God, is that Muhammad takes sources from other uh, known scriptures, apocryphal writings, some Jewish stories. Oh, in the I heard you talking to. Yeah, 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 about yeah. that, yeah. Exactly. So that's one of the reasons why I think that this Quran cannot be from God, it's from man. For example, Surah 19, verse 29 to 31, this talks about Jesus speaking from the cradle. This story is found in an apocryphal writing that somehow makes its way into the Quran. And we know that according to Ibn Hisham, Muhammad was at the mountain speak, speaking to people, speaking to a Christian who had resources with which to teach the Prophet. So Muhammad is hearing stories from Christians and then coming out and preaching them, twisting the words and trying to pass on this revelation to God. For example, the story where Jesus um, speaks in the cradle and says, I am the Son of God. In the original, it says, I am the Son of God. In Muhammad's version, it says, I am just a Prophet. 
That there is Mohammed taking a story he's heard, telling it in his own way, and changing the words to fit what he wants to preach. Well, why we Muslims say that? Because we do not believe that the books have been preserved as they were given to Jesus in the Moses. So what happened is the, the human beings who picked which books should come into canon. So what we're saying is that what they left, the many of the true statements of true, whatever the truth of the scripture was, they left and they picked something which was not truth. Secondly, if Muhammad Sassan plagiarized the stories from the old, you know, people of uh, apocryphal writing, show me one apocryphal writing which says God created heaven and earth in six days and no fatigue has touched him. Because your Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, God created heaven and earth in six days and he rested the seventh day. And Exodus he says he refreshed the seventh day. But Quran says chapter 50, verse 8, I believe, or verse 30, chapter 50, verse 38. Allah has created heaven and earth in six days and no fatigue has touched him. So where if he was either copying, he should have copied that he rested seventh day, but he didn't. He said no fatigue has touched him. Show me which writing, apocryphal writing says say no something? fatigue touched you're, him on the seventh you're, day. You're, you're making my case. This is again another situation where Muhammad would have heard this story and told it in a different way. Show me, show me where he heard. You just said this is the version in Genesis. This is the version within the Quran. You just you're making my case for me. And they're disagreeing with you. You're making my case for me. Yes, but Muhammad is also disagreeing with the apocryphal writings. No, no. But we know what the original apocryphal writings. Do you see what he's disagreeing with? I'll let you speak. You're making. We're having a dialogue. I think it's nice to have this dialogue. You let the other person finish. You're making my case for me. You're saying. You're saying that Genesis says this. The Quran says that. So show me how it's copying. You're making my case. That's a story in the Bible that is told in a different way than the Quran. That's called plagiarism. Secondly, secondly, in, it's not uh, secondly, answer my answer my point. Why in the apocryphal writing is that story of Jesus speaking in the cradle? Why is he saying in the apocryphal writing, I'm the son of God, but then in, in the Quranic version he's saying I'm just a prophet? Muhammad would have heard this story and changed it to fit what he wanted to preach. And you also said that, well, we let, let, let address no, these two no, points. No, you also said, I'm going to address something you said. You also said that Muhammad, um, we don't believe that the ones you have are correct and how do you know you, the people put the books into the canon this and other. Those books we're talking about now were too late to be added into the canon. So Muhammad would have heard stories, some, some would have only been a couple of hundred years before Muhammad, and which by, bear in mind the New Testament canon was already put together before that, then he has those uh, apocryphal writings into, into the uh, Quranic narrative. When you're saying well, why didn't they put them into the canon, that was too late to be considered into the canon. So there's a problem. There are only a few hundred years before Muhammad, too late to be put into the canon, so Muhammad would have heard these stories, added them into the Quran. Okay, the first I want to address this uh, six days God created in heaven and earth in six not, days. That's not what I'm Brother, are you talking over me now? So you just address that actually proves my point that Muhammad plagiarized six days in yeah, God created heaven in six days. Actually, here Muhammad is correcting the Bible. He is not plagiarizing at all, he's correcting. Don't say God has rested the seventh day because Allah says, no fatigue has touched him, negating the point that God has rested. So actually, he's not plagiarizing, he's correcting the Bible. On the other hand, about the uh, chapter 19, verse 29 to 31, when Jesus, you say the problem here is he did copy, but he changed from son to prophet. So it, you're making the point for me, actually. Meaning he didn't copy at all. Meaning the point is the rumors were, the knowledge was that Jesus spoke in the cradle. That people have corrupted it, that he spoke, but he was son of God. Allah is clarifying all the issues and problems. Allah is telling what was the truth. He spoke from the cradle, but Jesus was the prophet. Meaning, Allah knows where there is wrong and where there is right. So there is Muhammad Sassan is not copying anything. He's just correcting wherever the faults are. Imagine if Muhammad Sassan make a copy. You know what Quran says. Allah has revealed this word, Quran. Uh, sorry, uh, there's no contradiction in the Quran. If this is from anybody other than. So how Muhammad Sassan writing the Quran, but without any single contradiction in the whole Quran, and that's the challenge. And as a Muslim, I'm saying in the camera, there's not a single contradiction in the Quran. That's why we see if we copy from there to there to there, there must be as many errors okay, in the Quran. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So I'm yeah, going to address yeah, the that is my I'm going to address the first point first and then I'll address the second point after. The first point is Muhammad's correcting uh, Genesis, he's correcting the Apocrypha, this, that and the other. Yeah. For one, no Christian believes that that Arabic infancy gospel, right. <laughs> no Christian believes like that that Arabic... Um, Arabic Looking better from here? No, just the lights, yeah. No, no, no Christian believes that the Arabic infancy gospel is genuinely scripture. So for one, if you're going to say Muhammad's correcting uh, <laughs> this, this gospel, he's still correcting a false gospel, for starters. No Christian believes that happens. What you have in the Apocrypha, do you know what the Apocrypha means? The word Apocrypha? Yeah. What does it mean? Um, no. Made up that's not, stuff. No, that's not what it means. Um, um, uh, 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 Forgery? No, it's not what it means. 
apocryphalum. Okay, tell me what it means. Let me just tell you. Apocrypha means hidden. Hidden writings, yes? So these are hidden. And what you have in the Apocrypha, you can really split them down into two. You have Gnostic Apocrypha, which no Christian or, or Muslim should ever use, because the Gnostics believe God was a, was a, was a bad being, and the, the body is evil, and this, that, and the other. So you can either split them down into two categories. Gnostic or Apocrypha, when the Apocrypha really were trying to fill in the missing pieces. For example, in the life of Jesus in the Bible, there are some, so there are some years where, there, where we aren't told about what happened, yes? So the Apocrypha, these are stories that were uh, written much later, basically it's making up stories trying to fill in the gaps. It's a forgery, isn't what? it? Yeah, it is a forgery. That's why I say this is a forgery. Exactly, it's a forgery. But Muhammad is copying the forgery and then changing the words. So you're not really doing yourself any favours. He's copying... No, no, I, let me correct you. No, me forgery speak. doesn't I, mean I, everything I, I, in the forgery is wrong. Okay. Forgery can be the story, half story is there, but the half is made up. I didn't interrupt you, let me speak. Okay. So Muhammad is copying... No, long, so I have to cover all the points. Muhammad's copying... As you admit, a forgery. He's copying a forgery. I didn't change, admit that. I didn't say just, that. You just said it's a forgery. I said, he you just correct said, whenever so there's a false. Said, okay, okay. Don't put words so in my in, mouth. In this, in this apocryphal writing, it says, Son of God in the original, Muhammad tells the exact same story. We can have them like that and see. He tells the exact same story, and in the Quranic narrative, he changes it from Son of God to Prophet. Now, the issue is, we don't believe it's Christians. JC, do you believe that's uh, original? Do you believe that happens? The apocryphal writings? Yes. No, I don't no, believe exactly. so. exactly. You can ask any Christian here. We don't so believe... I don't believe that those apocryphal writings really happened. If there were stories made up, and many, and many of these apocryphal writings contain heresy. Do you have that apocryphal writing here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the one we, uh, compared with 19, okay. uh, 29, uh, chapter 19. In the original, it says this. What original? In the in the apocryphal, in the Quranic version, you have. Um, no, no, apocryphal writing. I'm trying to read to you. Yeah. In the original, in, in, in the Quran, Surah 19, 29 to 31, that's where it copies the apocrypha. So in Surah 19, 21, it says that Jesus spoke from the cradle and said, He has given me a book and he has appointed me a prophet. For in the original, Jesus spoke as a child and he said in the cradle, uh, I when you say original, you mean apocrypha. This is the, this is this is the apocrypha predates the Quran. Yes. So the no, when you use the word original, you're talking about apocrypha. The, the the story that Muhammad is telling, the original version of that. I want you to read the apocrypha. Let me. So we can compare. If you stop talking, I will do it. The original version I'm reading to you. The Quranic one. Says, I got it here. Yeah. The prophet. The original version of that story in the apocrypha. Which bear in mind, Christians don't believe it's authentic. We believe it's just a story. It's been, it's been made. What up. is it called? Which book is that? Apocrypha. Uh, the apocrypha. Yes. So let me read. What is the book called? Let me read it to you. I think it's the yeah, the Arabic Infancy Gospel of Thomas. Let me speak, let me speak. Okay. The, the, the Apocrypha version says this. We have found it recorded in the book of Josephus, the chief priest who was in uh, the time of Caiaphas, and men say that he was Caiaphas. But this man said that Jesus spake when he was in the cradle and said to Mary his mother, Verily I am Jesus, the Son of God. Verily I am Jesus, the Son of God. You see, in the Apocryphal version, Jesus says, I am the Son of God. Okay, which would fit with Christian theology, but we still don't accept it. It comes much later. It's, it's only that two lines. It's, it's only two lines. Too too Muhammad uses no. I did not listen to anything. No, you only read so two Muhammad lines. uses that same story and says, not son of God, but prophet. So Muhammad's copying a false gospel, an unauthentic gospel, and he's using that. And bear in mind, even Hisham, we know where Muhammad would have got this from. Even Hisham says in his biography of the prophet, he says in his biography of the prophet that Muhammad would have sat at the mountain with a Christian named Jabba, and Jabba would have had resources with which to teach the Can prophet. Can we address this so point Muhammad, first? So Muhammad, just making another point. Muhammad was listening to heretical Christians, and he was coming down the mountain, preaching, I'll address that this, point preach, afterwards. preaching this, Let's changing see. the words, and trying Let's to pass see. it off as revelation. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let yeah. me change the battery so you can get yeah, so you can respond, right? Okay, no problem. Action. Okay. You said that Muhammad copied the Apocrypha word for word. That's what no, you said. I didn't say word for word. Now you're now you're putting words into my mouth. Okay. I what did you say? I didn't say he copied it word for word. I'm saying he took the take the same story, same story and changed words. For example, in the original. I got it. I got it. You said same story, not word for word. You said same story. But here in Quran, story is longer than what you said. You read two lines. The story just the whole story says she gave birth. Uh, by the palm tree and then she gave birth and then she bring the child among her people and they say oh sister of Aaron who you you bring the child your father was a good man your mother was a chaste woman and then she pointed to the child and then child talk my question to you is is this whole story is in that apocrypha what I just told you that she give birth under the palm tree and the people come and people address her your father was a good man your mother was a chaste woman is that all in the apocrypha Abbas, you just made my point. You're, you literally just made my point. No, all of that isn't in the apocrypha. Thank you very but much. But that's the point. Thanks. Muhammad's using an apocryphal story 
adding additions and subtracting certain things. For example, he takes words out of Jesus' mouth okay, where he's saying, I'm son of God. Ben, he's ben, saying, that was yes or no answer, so, so I was so, so, going to make so, my point. Abbas, you've made my point for me. You are literally making my point. Ben, Mohammed changed Ben, it's my turn to talk. I just asked you to answer yes or no. Mohammed Not giving your commentary after that. No, my question was, you, as you confirm, that the whole story is not in the Apocrypha. I agree. It so, doesn't need to be. No, it's very important. If he was copying from the Apocrypha, where he's getting this extra story that she gave birth under the palm tree, she gave drink to the people, they say, oh, sister of Aaron, where he's getting that? Unless, unless the Allah is guiding him what actually, one, Allah, Allah is telling him what exactly the story is, and we all know that even some forgeries have some truth in it. That not every forgery is 100% false. That forgery meaning there's some truth and some falsehood to make it wrong. So what we're saying it in the in the Gospel of Thomas, uh, in fancy of the Gospel of Thomas, have a little bit of truth in it, which Jesus spoke in the cradle. But it doesn't have the whole story. But the Quran, Quran brings wherever the truth is, Quran collects all the truth and and, 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 and and guide people what the truth is. So it's cool, so it's cool. not no, no, it's no. not See, now, copying. What you've done it's, there is what you've, done, not what, what you've done there is you shot yourself in the foot. Because <laughs> you're saying that the Jesus being un, in, under the palm tree of Mary, that's not in the apocrypha. Actually, yes, it is. Let me read it to you. Oh, that's why I asked let, you. Let, you let, let me read it to you. Okay. The child Jesus, who was sitting with happy, a happy countenance in his mother's lap, said to the palm. Bend down your branches, old tree, and refresh my mother with your fruit. That story is found in the Quran. It's also found in the Apocrypha. You made my point. Keep That's reading. plagiarism. Keep reading that. Okay. Uh, and immediately at this command, the voice and the palm bent down to the feet of the Blessed Mary, and they gathered from its fruits, and they all refreshed themselves. That story is in the Apocrypha. That okay. story is in the okay, Quran. Okay. Did Quran That's say that? Did Quran say that? Did Jesus, say, say, no. Jesus say through palm the, 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 point, the point is, no. do, you know, do you know what plagiarism is? The definition of plagiarism. Copying, yeah, copying something yeah. that within plagiarism you can also change the words. For example, there are students and there are people who write books who get sued. So they plagiarise from another book. They don't take the, the, the existing book and uh, add it into their book word for word. They change it around hoping no one will notice. That's when you get sued for plagiarism. So you take somebody else's work, change it around and try to pass it off as your own. And I'm saying that's all Muhammad's done there. What, so what, the same what, stories in the Apocrypha, what? somehow they've made their way into the Quran. We know where. What Muslim, Ibn, Muslim Ibn, position Ibn, is this? Ibn Hisham said, Ibn Hisham said that Muhammad was at the mountain listening to a Christian who had resources with which to teach the Prophet. That's an Ibn Hisham's commentary of the Prophet. Ibn, so Ibn, Ibn Hisham is Hisham, not our source. Ibn, Hish, Ibn, no, Ibn, Ibn Hisham Ibn, is not our yard so, source. So, okay, so Ibn, many Ibn, Muslims Ibn, think Ibn, Ibn Hisham has many Israeliyats in it and they don't follow it, Ibn Hisham as a real source or yardstick. Explain person. how they got into the Quran then. Yeah, explain yeah. how what? those stories got into the Quran the and why they differ from the original. No, what I'm saying to you is... No, no, explain to me how those stories got into the Quran yeah. and how they differ from the original. I'm going to make you understand how I, we Muslims see. We Muslims see the fact, the truth is, in, in reality, Jesus born under the palm tree and Mary bring it to the people and then Jesus spoke in the cradle. We believe that's the original story. Along the way, the people have written different versions of that story and in that they added few things to please certain communities. They say he was a son of God and he told the palm trees. So the fact that happened, but that the stories were corrupted and then the Gospels, they left them out. But that didn't negate the fact that that actually happened. And the Allah, Allah, Allah is telling us what actually taking back, taking us back to the truth. But these stories around, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not clarifying very well. But what I'm saying, this apocryphal writings, people forget some bits of the story and that's why some people reject them. But Allah bring them back what was original story was. So that doesn't mean he, he copied that, he just tell what the truth was and that truth, some of that existed, which you call Apocrypha right now. <coughs> and who says they're Apocrypha? It's human being. People say that they're Apocrypha. And as I said, Apocrypha doesn't mean 100% all false. Apocrypha means they have some truth in it. And I'm sure Apocrypha writing says Jesus is God. Yes? In the one Muhammad copied from, yes it does. Yeah, okay. So, so you believe that, that part of Apocrypha, Jesus is God, yes? I, Even I, believe with the, I believe with the theology that Jesus is the Son of God, yes. Not theology. But I don't believe that writing is authentic. You're saying that these people would have known the, the, the real story of the birth of Jesus. The problem is the people who wrote that story about the birth of Jesus come hundreds and hundreds of years after the birth of Jesus. So there was only writing 
from hundreds of years after the birth of Christ, just basically trying to fill in the gaps. That's what Apocrypha is. It's hidden text. They're trying to fill in the gaps where the Bible... And they can be right one sometimes. Second, one second. Some, some of the things can be how, right, yes? How can they be right when they come hundreds of years after the birth of Christ? Those parts, for example, those parts, <coughs> the, the earliest account of Christ's life that we have when he was born is in the Gospels. Now these, these narratives that come hundreds of years after change the entire story. We believe Jesus... Then that's what, not what no, I'm no, saying. No, 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 I'm no, saying, no. can Apocrypha have the truth in it or not? One second, Abbas, I'm trying to answer you. I'm trying to answer you. We believe that, these, we believe that the earliest uh, narrative of the birth of Christ is found in our four Gospels. These other Gospels who come hundreds of years after, Michael Kruger is a New Testament scholar. His expertise is on the canon of Scripture. He agrees the only four Gospels we can trace back to the first century is Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Now, these, these, the Arab embassy Gospel of uh, Thomas comes far too late. So this author who wrote this Gospel wasn't even alive in the time of the birth of Christ. So I how, understand that. So how would he have known? I heard that. He wouldn't. No, my, so my question to you is simply, Muhammad's, I don't know why you're not asking my question. No, Mohammed's copying from a source that speaks about the birth of Christ from someone who wasn't even there. No, you're not answering my question. Um, my answer question is simple. Can apocrypha writing, which you reject, can they carry some truth in it or not? Can they carry some truth in it? They can say truthful things, yes. That's, that's right. So what we're saying is what you're saying, apocrypha, this one, is, is Muhammad copied, you think. They had the, Jesus spoke in the cradle. That because it's in apocrypha doesn't mean that's false. Because in the Apocrypha, so what we're saying is Apocrypha can carry some truth and Muhammad is saying what actually happened but somehow that 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 uh, that um, agrees with some of the Apocrypha story. That doesn't mean it's false. See the problem here? I mean Gospel of Thomas, not the infancy Gospel of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas, that's Apocrypha writing, what you believe. Yes. But you know 70% of that agrees with the canon, uh, sorry, uh, synoptic Gospel. 70% you know of Gospel that? of Thomas, you know more than John. That gospel you know, why, you know why we reject it? Because it comes far too late. We only accept the earliest gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel of Thomas is far too late. But seventy percent is agree with Gnostics. The gospel of Thomas is well within the second century, so it's far too late. Yeah. Now, now, but seventy percent of it agrees now, with Gnostics. But this, this, this is the, the, the approach you're taking is, very, is a very convenient one. This agrees with Islam, so therefore it must be true. Rather than looking at it from an unbiased perspective, this was written hundreds of years after Christ, some a few hundred years before Muhammad. Muhammad would have heard these stories from Jabba the Christian on the mountain of Malwa. He would have heard these stories, he'd come down and passed it off to Revelation. We all know that even in the earliest times, people accused Muhammad of plagiarism, that he was, he was just telling stories he heard. And we know this is a fact of history. Do you know Muhammad people accuse prophets of many things, but that doesn't mean they were right. One second, one second. People one second. accuse Jesus okay, okay. as he has a uh, prince of demon in him. Let, let me ask were, the they, were they right or were they let wrong? Me ask the question. But the evidence in Jesus' life proves that he didn't have a demon in him. The evidence of the life of Muhammad, when they say you was copying sources, mm. if you look back at the sources that we find, which somehow make their way into the Quran, those two things marry up. So there's evidence that Muhammad did copy the other sources. There's no evidence that Jesus had a you demon. See, you see the source you bring, uh, apocryphal writing, Quranic words, if he was copying from that, he, he corrected things which we which, which was not true meaning jesus didn't call palm trees to come down it was not jesus who said that it was god provided for mary and and jesus uh, when he came down and the, the jews were there and calling a uh, um, sister of aaron all these kind of things are not in the apocrypha so muhammad peace be upon him had to be so genius that he's bringing something from apocrypha and the man who could read and write something from apocrypha something from himself and then end of the day what we muslims believe after doing all that, not a single error in the whole Quran. That's what we believe. That's how I'm standing. So this is the reason I believe in the Quran. If you say he copied the things, the copyist can make many errors because he's copying things. How come the Quran stand free of any error as the challenge it is? Unless it is the God who's telling me whatever happened in the past is the truth. In between, there are a lot of plagiarism happen, a lot of, uh, sorry, apocrypha writing happened. But Muhammad, the Quran came to correct all the uh, fallacies into one correct narrative. That's what we believe. Okay. And again, it's very it's a very convenient approach to take when you just want to say this agrees with the Quran, therefore it must be true. Rather than looking at it from a strictly historical basis, where you can see these were written some hundred years before before Muhammad. We know that the people were accusing Muhammad of copying things. Lo and behold, these things that existed before Muhammad then make their way into the Quran. So the logical conclusion would be there is Muhammad did in fact copy things and changed it to fit the ideology that he wanted to preach. Now you said that the Quran has no errors. Absolutely not. Do you not. believe the Quran has no contradictions? Absolutely not. Okay. Not a single contradiction. Let me read, let me read you a couple of verses. No. But Bible has many errors. One second. We're talking about the Quran now. We spoke about the Bible previously. Now that's why this, I don't, I don't, I don't follow the narratives second, of the second, Gospels second, right now, uh, canon, because I find many errors in it. One second. So as I just said, so you're saying 
the, the, uh, the Brown Muhammad, has no record of single your, conversion. Your, again, the evidence, the evidence historically shows that Muhammad copied. We have people in the time of Muhammad accusing him of copying other sources, hearing stories, and then telling them as, as his own. And we have all, we can literally have the sources in our hands where Muhammad uses these sources, puts them into the Quran, into his uh, into his sacred revelation, and then tries to pass the knowledge from God. You just made the statement the Quran has no contradictions. There is contradictions within the creation account within the Quran. Surah 96 verse 2 says that God created man from a clinging substance. Then in uh, chapter 15 verse 26, God says, and we did certainly create man out of a clay from an altered black mud. So there's two, there's one contradiction, but there's two more. A different so context. There's one, two, different context. Three, four. Um, which so one is your second one? one? one, second, no, one because second. they're different contexts. One second. Different. One second. First, not, uh, chapter 19 verse 67. Does man not remember that we made him from nothing? That we created him while he was nothing? Then it says, in chapter 16 verse 4, he created man from a sperm drop. So you have four different creation accounts, all contradicting each other. In one moment, in, in, in one aspect, he's made, in one aspect, context. in one aspect, man is made from a drop of sperm. Then he's made from black mud. Then he's made from a clinging substance. All of those are, are, are things. These are tangible things we can hold. Then it says that we created man from nothing. Well, so what? So did God create man from nothing? Did he create him from mud? Did he create him from sperm? Did he create him from clay? When he Which say, one is when it? When he made from nothing, he's talking about when he doesn't even exist. There was nothing. There was nothing. Then Allah has created him. Then how he explained then? In other words, he says he created him from mud. Meaning in the, in the beginning he doesn't even exist. Then Allah made a mud and then he made from mud. Adam, when, he, when he's talking about it, Allah made him from dust and mud, Allah made Adam, the first human being, from dust and mud. Yeah. For example, if I, if I tell you Ben, I want, Ben, I will listen. If I tell you I made a tea with milk, yes, with milk. But I also, when I say milk, I probably, I have a sugar in it. I have a tea bag in it. I have water in it. But I'm just making the point, I made a tea from milk. No, there's other place I can say, I, I, I had a tea, I had sugar in my tea. Yeah, I, I had a sweet tea. But the problem is, that's these, not these are all things, it doesn't say I made it only with that. I made him only with that. In the different stages, Allah is saying different things which man is made of. He doesn't say I, I made him only from mud. Okay. So when he that says clearly in, the, in, the, in 96 verse 2, yeah. created a man from a clinging substance, then created a man from a sperm in chapter 16, then created a man from black mud in chapter 15. Those are all different things he made them from. It doesn't say in the Quran, it does not it doesn't say, say only it doesn't from say, mud. It doesn't say in the Quran, he made them from X, Y, and Z. It says in different chapters of the Quran. It's bearing in it mind. Have to bear, say that. Bearing in mind, Abbas, let me finish. If the Quran was revealed piece by piece, yeah, then it would make sense that at some point, if this is coming from a man, there would be a contradiction. So one second. If this is coming from a man, it's not a contradiction. One second, Abbas. If this is coming from a man, then there would be a contradiction because if Muhammad is saying this revelation is coming to him, part and part at a time, we over the span of years it's being revealed to him. If it's from a man, we would expect contradiction. We find contradiction here within it's the creation. contradiction, I'm telling you. We are finding contradiction here I within made, the creation account. I Abbas, made a Abbas, tea Abbas, with Abbas, milk. Abbas, that doesn't Abbas. mean tea. It's, 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 understanding is there. Abbas, it has a tea bag in it. Speak. It has a water Abbas, in it. Abbas, it probably speak. has sugar in it. Abbas. But that doesn't mean it's, it's only Abbas, milk. You can't drown out the conversation this, 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 by speaking over me. I'm going to continue you to speak. Just talking, I'm going to continue to speak, Abbas. You're saying, as I said, if this is from a man, we know Muhammad got this revelation bit by bit by bit over a span of years. Now, because it was over a span, of years if it's from a man we would expect some sort of contradiction if it's from man and we find that here in different parts of the crime which were revealed in different, it, parts, you, in different parts of the crime which were revealed within different years we find different creation accounts which would point to Allah the origin say, which would point to the origin of this which would point to the origin a of the lot Quran, doesn't make you right which you know would point that. to the origin of the crime being from man I don't know in, if it's a Christian one, thing, don't chapter, let Muslims speak. One chapter, I mean, come on, you just keep chapter, talking, talking, when I speak Abbas, for one, one minute, you're interrupting here. The other one interrupting here is yourself. So well, he never finished, passage, I mean, just keep on and on and on. He's bringing one point to the other. Because you don't let me finish. In one part, he was made from a clinging substance. In another part, black mud. In another part, a drop of sperm. In another you part, you in another part he was made from nothing. Now, listen, now, listen. If, this, if yeah. this was revealed by God, 
there would be no there would be no uh, there would be no contradiction. If the, if this was coming from a man, this is the third time you're really saying because you're not answering. If this was coming from a man, you're not letting me answer. If this was coming from a man, you're not letting me answer. If this was coming from a man who was getting this revelation, 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 who was getting this revelation over Thank a number you. of years, okay. would find discrepancy in which we do. Okay. Okay. Come, 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 come. No, no. When, when Allah says Allah created him with dust, you see, you need to see context. We talk about in the context of Adam, peace be upon him. He was created by from dust. When Allah says I create a man from nothing, He's saying when. Talking about the context when he there was nothing, he was nothing. Then after, of course, Allah made him uh, dust or a sperm or whatever you black mud. Is that different stages of different uh, of different stages? Allah created man. It's not a it's not a contradiction. Contradiction would be this. You say I created man only from a sperm sperm drop or only created from dust. That would be contradiction. It's a different stages. Different context Allah is talking about. It's, it's not a contradiction. Like as I give you example, I made a tea with milk. It doesn't mean that it's only milk. Understanding is yes, there's, there's a tea bag as well and water and sugar probably. Now, now so notice, now it's, notice it's, it's not a contradiction. Now notice what just happened. Within our previous con conversation, he wouldn't allow me to um, use context to explain what the verse means. In this conversation, he wants to use context, context, context. But the context of those verses, they are isolated instances. He's talking about, bear in mind, over the life of Muhammad, this was revealed in yeah. different years, yes? Do you agree? Yeah, of course. If that is revealed in different years, it's, it seems apparent Muhammad forgot what he said previously. Because in one, in, in one instance, man was created by mud, then by clay, then by sperm. This isn't, you're trying to make this out as it's a contradistinction, when in reality it's a contradiction. No, it's not. It's in your mind. Aren't they? It is. No. This is the point. I, I, this, I, this is the I, point. I said. It, it, this is the point. When, it, when he say he created man from nothing, what, what do you understand of that? I mean he created from nothing, how? What? what? He just, just make him appear like that? So you need to, you need to understand the whole uh, intertextual, intertextually the Quran. Allah is telling Adam how he created Adam. He created him from dust. So how come the understanding is he created him from nothing? That means he says be and he was there. No. So, okay. Meaning is saying when he doesn't even exist. Okay. Man doesn't so one, even one exist. Second, second, then he comes to be. So did so did one so, second. So, so did God create Matt? Did God, not letting me speak. did God create Adam oh, wait, from a drop of sperm or mud? Adam was so did he, create, did he create Adam from sperm or mud? Yeah, yeah. When Allah, Allah created him from dust. From dust. In his so context, sperm or dust? in his context, he created him from dust. But if he created, but of him course, his children. From, from, from his children, when it comes to his children, sperm. they are created from sperm as well. Ah. So different context talking about different people. Adam was created from dust, <laughs> and then man was nothing. Allah so, created okay. him, he was nothing. So, it, so, 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 so need, so need to dust? need to understand different contexts. Clay, talking about clay and dust are two different things. Clay and dust are two different things. In one, in one, Let's in read one, the context. In one, in Let's one, read the context. In one verse, it says he made. In one verse, it says he made them from mud. In one, another verse, it says he made them let's from. Let's read. Let's read the context. From, I don't remember every dust. single context in that. Yeah. Let's let's read the context. Blood clot is that, of course, when the sperm be, sperm become blood clot. These are the stages of Allah created human beings. It's, yes. How? So what was the stages of how you become? From sperm to human being, it becomes it becomes blood and flesh, isn't it? It does. Sperm. Where does it say blood clot? Where does it say blood clot? Ah, we need to see what the Arabic is. What Arabic exactly is saying? Mudga. Mudga. What is actually mudga means? I'm not. I'm not an Arabic speaking person. I'm not. I'm not Arabic speaking. I'm not Arabic speaking person. But there are people who are talking about. It's not talking about the dead blood here. Abbas. Like you heard from Christian. Okay, okay. So we, we've kind of beat this subject today. If you don't want to speak about the contradictions within the Quran, so let's go back to the conversation where we was making some headway, which is plagiarism. As I said, we know from the earliest times of Muhammad. Listen to this. This is the uh, Sahih International. Surah 625. Surah 625. Yeah, my phone's is going to go. Surah 625. Of them uh, were some who listened unto thee, but we have made, but we have placed upon their hearts vows lest they should understand, and in their ears a deafness. If they saw every token, they would not believe therein, to the point that when they come unto thee to argue with thee, the disbelievers say, "This is naught else," which means this is nothing else. <laughs> than fables of men of old. So we, even the earliest people, even the Quran, the earliest people, the Meccans, the, the, the Saudis, they knew that the stories Muhammad, the stories that Muhammad is telling are simply repeated, regurgitated stories from the legends of old. For example, Dorkarnain. For example, um, the crucifixion is a, re, is a reinterpretation of Basilides. Do you know, have you heard of Basilides? 
No, the Basilides, Basilides told the Basilides wrote a heretical gospel which was condemned by the early church as heresy, where he said that Christ wasn't crucified. This is where Muhammad would have got this from Basilides, from the uh, Coptic apocalyptic. You are putting words into that. They are not saying that. They are just generally saying that these are no, the no, stories of the no, old. These are the stories of the old. He's copied. What stories are you talking about? Uh, what stories of old? For yeah. example, the, underneath the palm tree, that was a story. Bear in mind, notice that. Or for word example, that we word. all came from notice, Adam and Eve. Notice or for that word example, there. we're going to be there. there's going to be a judgment Abbas, Abbas. day. Abbas. Notice that word. Then he's just talking, no, talking no, that you're not letting me, that me there. answer there. you. No, not notice, the word. notice that word no, there. No, but story. These are stories of no, old. These apocryphal writings, these apocryphal writings were nothing but that. They were stories. Am I allowed to? You are. When they're saying stories of the old, for example, if they're saying it, they're calling him your plagiarizing thing. If you go back to the Bible, people call Jesus that you are possessed by demon, prince of demon, Beelzebub. That doesn't mean they were right because they were in denial. They were rejecting whatever his teaching was. Some here, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, teaching them was 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 the truth. They heard about it. Jews saying the similar things. Christians are saying the same uh, similar things. Sabians yeah, probably are saying the same thing. But they were pagans. They don't believe in any religion. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they are saying these are the stories of the past, meaning they heard from the Jews and all the old people. So you are just bringing the same stories. But why not? Because we believe Jews and Christians came from yeah. same. They were Moses taught them same yeah, thing. What Muhammad is teaching them. Jesus, Jesus was. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Why are you interfering? He, he can talk on his behalf. What they are basically saying is, we heard these stories and we don't believe these stories. These are all rubbish. We don't believe in Torah, in Jesus, and all that because they were correct. So that's why they're telling him these okay, are the okay. stories of the past. Okay. Or even if they are saying it that he's whatever their opinion is, they, they, this, this is this is their opinion, and they are disbelievers and they're rejecting him no matter what he said. Okay, now let me to answer. You just said people said that Jesus was filled with a demon. Doesn't mean they're true. People said that Muhammad was copying uh, other sources. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't mean it's true. But we can test both those claims. We know that if you look at the life of Jesus, he wasn't he wasn't filled with de uh, demonic spirits. He actually cast out demons, and demons even said, "You are the Son of God." So we can test that claim. The evidence points that Jesus wasn't filled with a demon because he cast out demons, and demons even said, "You are the Son of God." The demons would recognise their own. They called him Son of God. They didn't call him a demon. We can test this claim that Muhammad copied popular yes. sources because people are making the claim, "Muhammad, you're copying the legends of old." Funny enough, we find the legends of old within Muhammad's revelation. So we can test both those claims. In the case of Jesus, we know he wasn't filled with a demonic spirit. In the case of Muhammad, we can test that claim and that this, the historical evidence points they did in fact copy other sources. Okay. So what you just said there is wrong. Now, where, where's your understanding is wrong? Is you are saying these pagans, Quraysh, who were saying Meccans, they are basically pointing out the apocryphal writings of the gospel. Not because just that. Well, well, my turn. So they they were so learned people, they knew all the gospels of and in the gospel of Thomas, all the apocryphal writing, but actually they were not talking about the Torah and Injil. They were distinguishing from Torah and Injil, they were talking about apocryphal writing. How you say, how you come to the conclusion they were talking about apocryphal writing? What I'm saying is that these Quraysh they do not believe in any religion. So they're saying Muhammad's stories are very much similar to the story of Moses and Jesus and Noah and Abraham. So they're saying these are the stories of the old. You're just copying them. But we say we say he was not copying. He was a prophet of God like the previous prophets. So he's basically bringing the same message, but they are comparing those messages. So that's what they that's what they reject. Okay. So okay. It's not only the apocryphal writings of Muhammad copied. These legends of old, these stories, would have also been not just Christian stories, but also Jewish stories. For example, in the, in the Quran, Surah 9, verse 31, it says, Then Allah sent a crow scratching the ground to show him how to cover a dead body of his brother. He said, Woe is me, I am not able to be as this crow and cover the dead body of my brother. Now this is found in the Mish this is found, the original story of this is found in the Mishnah Tanhuma. It's bearing in mind Jews believe it was just a story. It was a commentary, it was a story, it wasn't it didn't really happen. It's not it's not recorded within the Old Testament, it's not recorded within the Jewish Bible, it's just a Jewish story they used to tell. Now this story is also what found is the story? this story is also found in a Quran. So um, as I just said it covers 931, yeah. No, no, five thirty one. Five thirty one. Chapter five verse thirty one. The story of uh, God sending the crow to scratch so why the ground. Is in the Mishnah? One second, to scratch the ground to to show uh, Cain how to bury the bro uh, the body of his brother Abel. Okay. Why now, is in the Mishnah? My one second. One second. Because it's just a, one second. If this is a story. We're in the Mishnah. Which bear in mind, Jews don't believe to be um, authentic. They don't believe it's real. It's just stories. It's a fable. It's a Jewish story. That's okay? your opinion. It, it's some. It's That's Jew your opinion. Where's a Jew? It's the opinion of Jews. This would be a Jewish story. You tell your kids poor Ben. No, when and those, those listen, original listen, writers, listen, Mishnah, when they Abbas, were writing, Abbas, they were Abbas, writing Abbas, that Abbas, this is a fake Abbas, fiction. Abbas, That's Abbas, what you're claiming. Abbas, this is just a story. This come, this come, 
well after the time of Christ. This wasn't even written in the time of, um, of uh, Cain and Abel. This is written after Christ. For example, this is put together in the third century, early third century this is put together, okay? So, and this says this, notice the original story and notice the similarities. <laughs> after Cain slew Abel, the body laid outstretched upon the earth, since Cain did not know how to dispose of it, thereupon the Holy One, blessed be he, selected two clean birds and caused one of them to kill the other. The surviving bird dug the earth with its talons and buried its victim. Cain learned this, Cain learned from this what to do. He dug the grave and buried his brother Abel. It is because of this that birds are privileged to cover their blood. Now this story is found in the Jewish Mishnah. It's also found in the Quran chapter 5. So when those people saying that the Muhammad is copying uh, legends of old, the stories of old, these fables, it's historically true. Because many times we find writings in the Quran that match up with sources and texts which predate the Quran. The Quran ultimately is an amalgamation, as one scholar says, it's a cocktail of many different sources jammed into one. Man, I want you to really, really pay attention and, and think deep about it, what are you making a claim? You're saying Muhammad peace be upon him living in Mecca, he had people, there they were no illiterate people, most of the people, they were not educated people like Jews of Medina, wherever. He, he couldn't read, couldn't write. Somehow he got hold of all these stories from Mishnah, from the infancy gospel of Thomas. Somehow he found all those stories in Arabia and he pick and choose the stories. And he, when he picked those stories, he changed them a little bit. He changed. So, so he not only picked those stories, he not got all those collections of scriptures with him. He, he couldn't read and write. He then he very so genius that he changed a little bit of the stories as well for uh, for whatever reason. I mean, you really believe that 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 is possible? That was realistic one. Let me. So how, what purpose he was doing that, and why he was so selective in the stories? Uh, it doesn't make any sense can, can unless I, unless unless the conclusion is unless. That this is the word of God, but it exists. The truth exists in different forms, in different books. People were writing it and exists, and he is just whatever uh, uh, revelation coming. If you find in different sources. Let me ask. Okay, so you're saying that how in the world did Muhammad, who was a literate man, yeah. get all of these sources together? Yeah. That's not what yeah. I said. We know within the Arabic culture it was very oral. They could memorize. That was fantastic at memorizing poetry. So it presupposes because they're so good at memorizing poetry and other uh, oral stories. And we know Muslims are fantastic at memorizing the Quran. But how he's picking some parts and, and yeah. adding yeah. other parts? Ah, ah, no, how he's adding other parts? Let me speak. Yeah. Let me speak. <laughs> okay. So we know that those good at mem uh, memorizing oral stories. They told stories. It was an oral culture, okay? So because it's an oral culture, if Muhammad was told these stories, he was very capable of remembering them. For example, Ibn Hisham but changing says, them in the Ibn middle. Hisham says, explains that the Prophet used to sit at the hill of Marwa inviting a Christian, but they actually also would have resources with which to teach the Prophet. So it wasn't Muhammad gathering these resources, reading them and then changing them. It was Muhammad sitting with somebody else who had the resources, being told the resources, and then going out and speaking about the resources, but changing the words. Yoga. Yeah. This one you keep reading in Mehsham. Do you know our Yarsik is Quran first and then come Sahih Hadith, Mutawatir Hadith? This is, this is, this is, this is no, issue. No, no, this is no, 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 that's my point. You did not find this story. Why you did not find this story in any book of Hadith, in any Sahih Hadith? Why you have to go back to Ibn Hisham, which is the biographer and most of the scholars in Islam right now, they say he made many errors bringing Israelias. You know what Israel, Israelias are? The Jewish and cultural, the traditional stories that the Ibn Hisham brought. So they do not think that the Ibn Hisham is authority. Yes, he's the earliest one. Yeah, but he is not the authority. He made many errors. So the reason is, it's not in the, in the Sahih Hadith. This story cannot be verified. And this story, we do not believe it. I come back to my point. Why he has so much knowledge from all different sources, yet they are not identical. His story is not uh, very similar to what Mishnah is. Slightly, there's a differences there, uh, or apocryphal uh, Gospel of Infancy Thomas. There's a difference in story. Why he bothered to change them? Why he just narrate as it was? What was it? Unless, as I say, they had errors, but his story was original, which found bits and pieces here and there. No, and the, the answer to that is because it was an oral culture. We know if I tell you something and you tell all these guys something and, I, and you tell all these guys something, we're all going to tell the exact same story in our own slightly different way. Okay? And what Muhammad did, he didn't just go out and tell the story in a different way. He changed the theological consequences of what those verses say. For example, when it says Jesus said in the cradle, "I am the Son of God." 
God. Muhammad tells the exact same story, but changes the words from Son of God to Prophet. So yes, he does tell the same story in a slightly different way. In doing that, he changes the theological uh, meaning of what was said in the original context. And what about when the story says in the Old Testament, the Solomon, he worshipped idols. Yes? What does this have to do with what we're No, no, about? I'm telling you, the same story is in the Quran as well. But the Quran says it was not Solomon who uh, do shirk, but it was the demons who done shirk. Yeah. What was the reason of him to changing that story, completely changing the context of the story, if not to blame Solomon, it was not Solomon who done that. What was the reason he would have had again, to change that? Again, again. The same, I'm coming back to the point is the plagiarism. So if you're plagiarizing other stories, he plagiarized this as well from the Old Testament. Yes. But he changed a little bit. Yes. What was the reason? You're making, he, you're making my point. Yeah, what was the reason? No, what was the reason he has to change Abbas, this point? Abbas, you're making my point. You're saying Muhammad also copied stories from Solomon. Yes, he did. This is my point. He's copying, no, you're saying that. He's copying stories. I say you're he, saying that he, if, he was, if he's plagiarizing. He's copying stories. You're making my point. You're 100% right. He copied stories from the Old Testament as well as apocryphal writings, as well as Jewish Mishnah. What you just said. I say if you, if what you just does. said. I didn't say he did. What you just said doesn't refute my point. It makes my point. Now why he has to change that? The Solomon, Old Testament say he worship idols. What was the reason he has to say, no, it was not Solomon who worship idols, it was the, the demons. Why? For the same reason he changed the story of Jesus speaking in the cradle to fit his narrative. No, the point here is because Solomon didn't. He said Solomon didn't, but Old Testament, they corrupted the true story. But Allah came, uh, Allah corrected him because Muhammad was not there. So he has a divine uh, knowledge coming from him, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, all seeing of all times, he's correcting the old narrative were wrong. It's not plagiarizing it, it's saying, yes, there is some truth, but correcting all the fallacies. That's what Quran, Quran, which, which is Quran a called Muhaymin, criterion. Whatever the wrong was, it clears the wrong and, and accept the right. But again, that's a very convenient way to look at things. It's, 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 it's very convenient, Abbas, it's very convenient to say, yes, Muhammad got these stories from these places, but he changed the meaning to, to fit the uh, correct I'm asking things. you why. So, listen, I'm not saying he did. It's very, I say, it's very, why? It's very convenient answer, to say. Answer. It's, it's very convenient to say. It's very convenient to say. Yes, Muhammad took these stories, but he changed them to correct them. It's very convenient to say correct to them when in reality he was taking a historical writing. I'm asking a question, and he, wasn't, he wasn't correcting it. I'm he not just, saying he corrected. He wasn't said, correcting it. He was just changing it. Why? Why? You tell me. Well, well let's, let's talk about Jesus, for example. Why would he correct the story in the cradle? When Jesus says, I'm the Son of God, uh, in the cradle, sent to bring salvation, why, why would he change that from Son of God the prophet? Because he wants to fit, he wants that to fit his Islamic narrative. He doesn't want Jesus to be God, so he changes it. That's why. Because those people who write the infancy uh, Gospel of Thomas, they believe Jesus is the Son of God, but they, they heard the story, they, it was narrative was, was there, So, but they believe he was the Son of God. So Quran came along, he get what is right, which was truth, and, and correct what was wrong, which meaning again, he was not son of God. Which again is, very is it possible for God or not? Which, which, is, which is again is very convenient, that's called cherry picking. You're saying, I like this, so I'm going to accept this. Not me. I don't like that, so I'm going to reject that. I did it. No, 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 basically I'm just saying that this is your... Are we supposed to shake hands? <laughs> oh, okay, Thank you. You want to wrap up? Uh, Next time we can talk about the Bible. We wrap up. Well, well what, just wrap up is that, uh, that Quran didn't... Uh, plagiarized and Muhammad didn't plagiarize the copy uh, from the, the Old Testament or the Apocryphal Gospel. Quran basically came to correct what was wrong and, and get what was right. And we're not saying any forgery, forgeries can have truth in them as well. So does those forgery apocryphal gospels. They have some truth. That's why Muhammad didn't bring, bring everything or according to you copy everything. He just bring what was truth and correct what was wrong. For example, the Bible says Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 that God created the earth and heaven and earth in six days and he rested the seventh day. Quran chapter 50 verse 38 clearly says he no anxiety has touched him. He created heaven and earth six days and no fatigue has touched him. Meaning Quran is correcting the fallacy of the Bible there. So Muhammad Hassan didn't copy anybody. He, the divine revelation, God just guiding him what was the truth. And that's why I say the reason is that's why there's not a single contradiction in the Quran. Because he was he was copying, there was a contradiction all over the Quran. Thank you, Abbas. 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 Um, as you heard Abbas saying, he says there's the uh, Quran didn't copy um, apocryphal writings, Jewish fables, and things like this. Yeah. But if we actually look at the historical evidence, we know within the Quran, Muhammad was accused 
by the Quraysh are copying the legends of old, the stories of old. And when we look within the Quran, for example, Surah 19, verses 29 and 31, that's found within apocryphal writings. The apocrypha says, in the, Jesus speaking from the cradle, in the original apocryphal version, Jesus says, I am the Son of God sent to bring salvation to the world. In the Quranic version, the words are changed from Son of God to I'm just a prophet. <coughs> Excuse me, Corona. So when we look at the historical evidence, we see that Muhammad's taken many stories. For example, the, uh, the, the, uh, when Cain killed his brother and the crow showed him how to bury his brother, that's found in the Jewish Mishnah. That's found in a uh, Jewish writing, which no Jew considers to be uh, canon. They don't believe that to be biblical. It's just a Jewish story which come after. It was actually compiled within the early third century. So we see that Muhammad is continuously taking stories and putting them in the Quran. We know that in Ibn Hisham's commentary of uh, Muhammad, his, his biography of Muhammad, he says that Muhammad was sitting at the mountain of Marwa, hearing stories from a Christian called Jabba, who was taking resources with him which to teach the Prophet with. So we know that Muhammad was copying Jewish, uh, Jewish fables, we know he was copying um, Christian Apocrypha, we know who he's getting this from, for example Jabba the Christian. Uh, secondly, in a point he just made at the end, the Quran has no um, contradictions. When we look at the creation account of the Quran, it says that um, it, when we look at the creation account of the Quran, which he says is no contradiction, it says in one story that he's created, he created man from mud, then created man from sperm, yeah. then created man from dust. Which one is true? It's not a contradistinction. It is a contradiction. Thank you. Thank you, man.